Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's meeting of the Committee of Adjustment. This is a meeting to consider applications for minor variants and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act of Ontario. Please keep in mind the intent of this process is to review the proposal that is before us, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the committee, after consultation with the Secretary Treasurer, will set a new hearing date. No further notice will be provided unless there are changes to the application. In order to conduct an effective and efficient hearing, we have adopted the following process. The owner or authorized agent will be given the opportunity, if so desired, to briefly explain to us the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise out of the hearing. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for this presentation. You need to state your full name and address for the record. Any materials submitted to the committee for viewing will remain the property of this committee. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All persons attending the hearing who wish to support or oppose the application must also state your full name and address for the record. A maximum of five minutes will be provided to make your presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chairperson of the committee, and any submissions beyond the five minutes will also be at the discretion of the committee. If there are several speakers sharing the same view, please select the spokesperson to present the group's opinion. We do want to hear your views, however, covering the same points will not advance your case. The owner or agent will then be provided with a further five minutes to respond to the comments made by any interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the owner or agent has any concerns found in staff reports, particularly with any proposed conditions, this is your opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into the committee for a decision and this will mark the end of all discussion. Once the committee makes an oral decision, any person desiring a copy must file with the Secretary Treasurer at this meeting a written request for notice of the decision. A green sheet is provided in the back at the table for that purpose. Please note that you must make a written request in order to be included on the list that is used by the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal for the giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed not later than 10 days for a minor variance and 15 days for a consent to the applicant, the owner and or agent, and any other person who filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal. The last day to appeal the decision to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding. The Secretary Treasurer will then notify the applicant through written correspondence. People attending this committee meeting are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff and the other people in attendance tonight. Tonight's meeting will also be video recorded and available for future viewing on the town's YouTube channel. Finally, we ask that cellular phones be switched off during this meeting as they tend to interfere with the audio system. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first item on our agenda today uh, are regrets, and we have none. And uh, secondly, a declaration of procurement interests. I see none, thank you. I will now take a request for a deferral or withdrawal of applications. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to defer or withdraw an application? Okay, I see none, thank you. So we'll proceed with the first matter um, on our agenda, which is CAV 019 of 2019 at 1381 Willow Terrace. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Madam Chairman. My name is John Whitten, acting agent, address 58 Conrad Place, Gordon v. Ontario. John Whitten, right? Yes. Good evening, Mr. Whitten. Give me a moment to canvas the room, please. Who is here uh, in attendance for application CAV 019 of 2019 at 1381 Willow Terrace? I see none. Okay, Mr. Witten, um, this time is yours. We uh, have done our site visits. We are familiar with your application. This is for a one-story addition to the rear of the existing property dwelling. 
Do you have anything further to add or to address the committee with? Uh, Madam Chair, I have two uh, letters of approval from the adjacent neighbors that I just want to hand in. Okay. And then I would just say simply I concur with staff's report that we uh, meet the four criteria. And you've read the conditions and you're satisfied with them? Yes, we have. So, uh, members, um, do you have any questions of Mr. Witten at this time? Any items of clarification? I see none. Mr. Witten, if you're comfortable with the staff's report and you have nothing further to add, we can take this matter into committee. Thank you. Very well. Mr. Charlebois, thank you very much. All right, Madam Chair. Um, Having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission as well as the town's written staff report, which I note that they're in support of the application, uh, and uh, taking into account there are two letters of approval, uh, or support, I should say, for, uh, for this particular motion, and noting that there are no uh, objections uh, from the public, whether oral or written, um, I find myself uh, prepared to put forward a motion in support of these variances, uh, finding that they do meet the four tests on the Planning Act and making them subject to two conditions. One, that the addition be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations dated December 28, 2018. And two, that the approval expires two years from the date of this decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction and in cases where a building permit is not required, that the proposed scope of work has not been fully completed. Very well, thank you, Mr. Charbois. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? The application has been approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council. So, so the next item on the agenda is CAV 020 of 2019 at 58, no, sorry, 458 Sandmere Palace. Please. Good evening. Your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Aidan Turkman, uh, 86 Gerard uh, Street, uh, Toronto. Sorry, can you repeat your last name again? Aidan Turkman. Turkman. Okay, thank you. Mr. Turkman, just give me a moment. Is there anyone here in attendance for CAV 020 of 2019 at 458 Sandmere Place? Okay. Are you in opposition or in support? Very well. You've sent us letters, or you're here to speak? Both. Okay, because we, uh, the reason I ask is we do have some letters on, um, on hand, and I just wanted to confirm. Very well. Mr. Turkman, you may proceed with your presentation. Uh, the members of the uh, committee will ask you questions, and then we will take the comments from the neighbors. Well, I don't have much to add other than what's uh, already uh, uh, written and supported here. Um, the only thing uh, that, I, that I may add is uh, during the initial permit uh, approval uh, process, there was uh, a walkout basement which was already approved and the footprint was there. Uh, the owner decided not to do that uh, walkout basement, so the addition is actually uh, based on the approved existing walkout basement uh, 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 permitted by the city, so uh, not by by not doing the the, uh, the, the addition. Of, I mean, for the basement, uh, they created a, a kind of a very really weird-looking uh, structure over there with a diagonal cut. So uh, the purpose of uh, filling that and making it more usable on the existing permitted uh, uh, structure. So that's what I want to say. Very well, thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Cookman at this time? Mr. Charlebois, thank you. So you wouldn't happen to have a drawing. I was a little confused on the second floor as to what you were filling in um, exactly. Would you be able to show me that? Yes. Uh, I don't have a drawing with me, but in the... Uh, I can... The, uh, the staircase at the main entrance uh, is open to below. Thank you. <clears throat> so.
So the staircase on the second floor was larger, and uh, the the the, uh, the walkway around the staircase was narrower, and uh, the washroom over there uh, uh, didn't exist, so it was all uh, open. Uh, so basically, the staircase is uh, uh, is expanded. Uh, I mean, is narrow, and uh, the uh, walkway is uh, made. Yeah, so basically the stairs is uh, made uh, smaller and this corridor is, uh, the, the walkway is uh, enlarged and the washroom is added. And there's no, no growing of the second floor. This is simply filling no. in internal space. No growing of the second floor and no growing of the main floor either uh, if we take the original permit uh, because where there is the addition was the walk up basement stairs. Okay. Yeah, you did mention that before. Okay, thank you. Any further questions of Mr. Turkman? Okay, I see none. Mr. Turkman, I uh, will invite you to sit, take a seat for a few minutes and uh, we'll call on the um, neighbors. Who would like to speak first? Yes, I'd like for both of you to state your name and address for yes. the record. Uh, it's fine if you stand there together. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Estes Mustaklis. That's spelled E-S-T-E-S, -E -E last name M-O-U-S-T-A-C-A-L-I-S. Mustaklis. Yes, thank okay. you. Uh, for getting it correct. Uh, I live at 448 Sandmere Place. Four, four? Four, four, eight. Four, four, eight. Yes. Okay. Uh, my neighbors and I are opposed to the variance four, four, five, eight Sandmere. My neighbors and I do not understand why the builder is requesting a variance at this time as the house has been under construction for over four years. Asking for additional floor space after four years when the house has already been built to the maximum allowed by our bylaws brings into the question the intentions of the builder from our point of view. Why is this happening now? Is it a case of uh, ignoring bylaws and asking for a variance afterwards, or is it simply that the builder uh, is unsure of what he's trying to do? We believe the variance being applied for fails to comply in the following ways. According to test one, uh, does the variance maintain the general intent and purpose of the official plan? From our point of view, the answer is no. The livable Oakville plan intends that new buildings are established in neighborhoods to preserve and protect the distinct character, cultural heritage, living environment, and sense of community of our neighborhoods. The size of the new builds floor ratios are currently allowed in, that are currently allowed in Oakville's plan has already allowed the structure to be erected at 458 that is definitely not in keeping with the pre-existing character of the neighborhood. To allow the structure to be even bigger is contrary to the Oak, uh, Oakville's plan thereby making it prohibitive from our point of view. Uh, does it meet the intention of the zoning bylaws? If it did, then why are they asking for a variance? I have a question for you. Certainly. So did you follow through in the applicant's um, reasoning? And are you happy with the size of the home as it is constructed right now? Uh, I think that, am I happy with it? The short answer is probably no. Do I accept that the neighborhood is going, to, as new builds are put up, that there's going to be some change? Yes, I understand that and I accept that. So do you recognize that their request is actually internal to the facade that you see right now? It has no... That was a thing I think that uh, my neighbors and I are a bit confused by that whole thing, so... Yeah, so essentially that's the application before us. They. The facade that you see before you is what is going to be, and everything else is interior within the space. Does that change your mind at all? It doesn't mind, but no, I, 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 have to agree. I, I have mitigating circumstances. Sorry, I, you have name. to state yes. your name and address for the sure. record, yes. Yeah, Rob Peretti. Rob. Peretti, P-O-R-E-T-T-I. P-O-R-T-T-I. 
I'm at 500 Sandmere Place. 500? 500, yes. And uh, uh, more interestingly, I'm directly behind this house. So I'm here because I'm upset that the build as it sits at 458 exists the way it does today because we were not made aware that they were changing the orientation of the house so that rather than my backyard facing their backyard, I'm seven feet away from their sidewall instead of the back of their house. So at the point that I saw the, the change, I was compelled to be here um, because I'm quite upset over the fact that Whereas I used to have a normal backyard, I now have a backyard looking at the sidewall because, of course, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the, the distances from the sidewall to my backyard is very different as soon as you reorient the house. Thank you for your submission. Do the members of the uh, committee have any questions for either Mr. Peretti or Mr. Mustakalis at this time? Okay. If you have nothing further to add. Well, I had a couple of other points around. Go ahead. By, by all means, I did interrupt you and I did yeah. ask you a question in the middle yes. of your. Um, I think the, the test three, again, simply uh, the house exceeds the character. Uh, the, the Sorry, the livable Oakville plan expects that the character of a neighborhood is to be preserved. Uh, even when there are new builds, the structure at 458, as my neighbor has indicated, is out of character with the pre-existing neighborhood. Uh, finally, is the variance minor? Certainly from our perspective, the answer is no. Most of the houses on our street are 950 to about 1,200 square feet. Um, this is adding an additional 10%. What they're asking for is an additional 10% addition to the, uh, the property. Okay, Bob, um, I have a question for planning. Mr. Hassan? With respect to changing the orientation, we have nothing in our notes that says that. Can you maybe reflect on that a little? Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, as long as the setbacks in the zoning bylaw are maintained, depending on the orientation of the driveway, the orientation of the house could be towards the flankage or it could be towards the front. But the definition in the zoning bylaw of the front lot line would be the shortest lot line. Okay, so any changes that the um, neighbor is reflecting on is actually within the right, as of right, for the applicant? Yeah, through Madam Chair, that'd be correct. Okay, thank you very much. Does that answer your question, sir? It, it does. All I'll say is when you're on a cul-de-sac and you're, the, the home that was behind you had their backyard uh, in sort of mirror opposite of your backyard, to me, that is way more than a minor variation. And I don't understand why, if it's, if it's within uh, the legal requirements for the city, they need to really look at that particular, because it has a huge impact on your neighbor. So I, I'd like to say that to begin with. And then secondly, in the document here, uh, notwithstanding the, uh, the uh, description of what the, uh, of this new change is, uh, in the document, it says to add a one-story addition. So it says uh, proposed interior floor area addition on the second floor and a one-story addition to an existing two-story single detached. I didn't get that from the description that we saw here compared to what was written in this document. So I'll, I'll, I'll answer a, a couple of your, state, your points. So the first being what is written in terms of the variance here. We, def we re deflect to planning staff mm -hmm. and zoning staff who decide how the terminology that needs to be written in these applications um, is. The second thing with respect to, while I appreciate the fact that you are now looking at a side uh, of a home, um, this committee has no um, power over changing that, yeah. nor does it have any say in how these homes uh, get built. Basically, again, we deflect the planning and zoning and what is as of right in terms of an application 
and the town takes care of that. Really, the only matter that this committee at this present time has a power to decide on is the variance that is before us. And it's to permit the maximum residential floor area of a detached dwelling to be 43.61% versus the 41%, which is a, an additional square footage of um, 125 square feet internally to the existing dwelling that you see right now. That is really the only thing that is before us. So while I appreciate your submissions and your concerns, that's not in, within our power to effect change on. Uh, and you had asked us if we were happy with it. And yes. I think you've gotten the answer to that. I yes. do. Uh, shortly, no. <laughs> and but. I appreciate you coming out and appreciate your submission. And certainly this committee does take into consideration all the points that the neighbors bring forth before us in front of a, a for any application. Would you like the uh, petition that I have? I yeah, yes, that would be submitted into record and we do have a reflection on that. Thank you. I will now ask you to take a seat if there's Certainly. no quest no further uh, questions from committee members to there aren't any. The next person who had their hand up, the lady in red, you had your hand up? Yeah. So have you been um, satisfied in terms of your representation at the podium? Yes, like would you like to say, essentially would you like to speak for yourself or you are happy that, that I guess, I'm assuming you're her husband or, oh, would you like to speak? Okay, so that's fine. Thank you. Um, I will call back. I, I've got a bunch of names in front of me now. Mr. Turkman. So. so the committee have asked the, the neighbors several questions, but it's really on you to uh, address their concerns as well. So I hope you've taken notes and you're able to speak to anything that they've mentioned uh, from your perspective? Well, they mentioned the length of the construction and uh, things happen. Uh, the owners uh, have their own issues, so uh, it's their own private thing. I cannot uh, comment on that, but yes, it took that long. And, uh, and they are going to now proceed at full speed. Uh, one reason was uh, they had a big uh, issue with uh, the original architect and they were kind of uh, misled. And uh, so as the house is built, uh, you know, they realize what they are getting into and they try to make changes, amends, etc. And that's why we are here. Uh, other than that, uh, I cannot comment about the, uh, the neighbor uh, looking at the side of the house. Uh, the reason being, uh, I wasn't even aware of it. Uh, they applied for it and it's been uh, permitted. I believe it's uh, within the uh, zoning bylaw. Uh, as for, uh, as for the, the minor variance, uh, it is really uh, an internal uh, uh, increase and uh, there is nothing uh, changing to the exterior look of the house. Uh, it's there and uh, it's been approved and uh, I don't think it's changing uh, the, uh, the, uh, the facade of the neighborhood in any way or form. It's just one of those houses. My and question to you is though, why now? Uh I mean, you had a walkout basement, you had everything approved, why now? Why, why the changes? What transpired from the approval to now in construction that made you decide you want to come back and address it this way? Well, uh, it wasn't really my decision, I'm, I'm just uh, helping that. But uh, once uh, at the initial stage, they realized that the walkout basement was, uh, was kind of uh, breaking the basement uh, and making it unusable, so they decided not to do it. Once they didn't uh, uh, follow through with that uh, walkout basement issue, now the kitchen was kind of cut diagonally and it wasn't really uh, helping uh, going in and out, so it was uh, not a good, uh, good uh, setup. So, uh, so they decided to change that and, uh, and that's why we are now applying. And, uh, and also uh, with the, the artistic looking, uh, uh, looking uh, open to above uh, uh, stairs, 
uh, they were uh, sacrificing uh, storage space uh, 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 and, uh, and washroom space, and, uh, and, the, and the walkway is very uh, narrow around the, uh, uh, around the stairs. So they thought that uh, that would be, uh, you, know, ad uh, you know, that would be good to uh, address that uh, before it's too late. And, uh, and they are living uh, part here and part overseas, so back and forth, uh, and changing uh, builders and architects, etc. It, it all took uh, some time, plus their own uh, financial considerations. And uh, I asked them to uh, apply uh, and, uh, you know, get an approval and then go full speed, and that's why we are here. Very well, thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Turkman? Mr. Charlebois, thank you. <clears throat> Got a couple. So the, the first time, were, were you here for the variance the first time? I, I don't recall this. That wasn't the variance. Um, but you said there was a variance for the walkout basement, or that no, was no, no variance? In the initial permit drawings, right. uh, initial official permit uh, application, there was a walkout basement. Which I was see. approved. I see. So it was never, you, you never came to this committee for variances no, the first time? No, there was no variance application. Okay. And that walkout basement footprint was already approved. Right. So by not doing the walkout basement, the, the footprint of the house actually mm -hmm. made smaller than, uh, than approved. Mm -hmm. And then they decided to add that additional section, not to add to the basement, but to, uh, to save the kitchen space. Uh, right. And it's only mm -hmm. five square meters. Yeah, and I'm going to ask you to pull out that drawing again if you still have it, or maybe you can borrow it again. Uh, because I know I did ask you about the second floor, but just for the people here, if you could perhaps show me that first floor addition, because there's a little bit of confusion. Not all of the space is internal. The second floor is internal, but on the yeah. first floor, you are actually building a very small addition. Yes, this area. Yeah. Which is which is this area. So the kitchen was coming like this. So this area is added. Normally, this area was underneath, uh, was the uh, entrance to the basement. Was the entrance to the basement. And yes. the second floor extended over that. And now you're basically- No, the second floor- It didn't? It didn't extend. Okay, like so now you're, so this was an exit for, for the walkout basement and you want to close it now? Yes. Okay. All right, thank there you. There is no second floor structure above it. And then the second floor right. is just okay, the yeah. Right, I see that now. Okay, right. Thank you. Any further questions of Mr. Turkman at this time? Okay. Um, okay, those are the petitions from Mr. Mustakalis. Um, of all the neighbors who've undersigned opposing granting the variance for 458 Sandermere Place. Okay. <coughs> Any questions of Mr. Turkman at this time? Any items of clarification? I see none. Um, Mr. Turkman, if you have nothing further to add, we can take this matter into committee. I'm ready for a motion. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Madam Chair, um, having conducted my site visit and having reviewed the applicant's uh, written submission, uh, as well as the town's written staff report, uh, which I note is in support of, also having taken into account the comments presented by the applicant this evening, as well as the uh, questions and submissions from the, the public, uh, noting that there were uh, a number of, uh, uh, there was a couple of letters submitted of objection, as well as uh, a, a petition as far as uh, people in opposition of the application. Um, I am wanting to make a motion um, in support of the application as applied for. Um, I do want to thank the uh, people for coming out and um, uh, 
commenting on what has been submitted, uh, noting that there are it's, it's shoring up the uh, the kitchen area above where the walkout was, and the other area as far as the uh, second floor space. So I find that I agree with the staff report that it is minor in nature and does meet the uh, tests of the uh, planning act. Um, I do want to note that there are a couple of conditions with regards to the approval and that is that the addition be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations dated January 17, 2019, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction and in cases where a building permit is not required, that the proposed scope of work has not been fully completed. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'm going to support the motion, but I did want to address some of the uh, comments made by the community and sort of explain, at least from my perspective, how I'm looking at this. Uh, while I appreciate the frustration of a long-term build, I've got a house next to me that's almost at the two-year mark, so I, I appreciate that and I understand the concern on the optics of the timing. But neither of those are items that are, you know, relevant to the test that the committee has to concern itself with. Um, with respect to the gentleman concerned about the side yard, um, there is no variance for the side yard. What the applicant is doing there is permitted by the bylaw. And I, again, I appreciate that the zoning bylaw permits approximately a 3,000 square foot house here which is significantly larger than the majority of the existing uh, housing. The variance is for approximately 200 square foot squaring off within the side yard. And that's what's in front of the committee tonight. And while we heard a lot of objection, uh, no one spoke to the actual impact that the variance is causing. And that's really what the committee has to concern itself with. And Yes, the house is larger, it's taken a long time, but the question for the committee is largely what is the impact of the variance that's in front of us? And I, for one, don't see that there is an impact by this uh, single story squaring off of the main floor. Thank you, Mr. Chalowski. Any further discussion? I see none. Um, the motion before us is to uh, approve this application as applied for with the red conditions on record. Uh, all those in support? Okay. The application has been approved. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item on our agenda is CAV 021 at, uh, of 2019 at 30 Normandy Place. Did somebody forget their phone? Um, a gentleman, someone forgot their phone at the podium? Good evening, uh, Madam Chair. Good evening. Uh, it's John Wilmot. I'm the agent for my client. Good evening, Mr. Wilmot. Uh, a moment to canvas the room, please. CAV 0212 at, of 2019 at 30 Normandy Place. Is there anyone here in attendance for this application? I see none. Um, if you'd be kind enough, uh, gentlemen, if you'd be kind enough to take this outside the atrium, uh, we would appreciate it as the noise does carry forward into. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Wilmot. It doesn't appear that there's anyone here in attendance. Uh, I know that this is an addition of a one story to the year of this, rear of this existing building. Um, we've done our site visits. We're familiar with the application. This is your time. If you have anything further to add to the application, go ahead, sir. Uh, I think I'll uh, uh, rely on the uh, comments from the, t the town and, uh, and uh, our application and our drawings to uh, explain it. Uh, I could uh, answer the, the questions of the committee if it has any. Perfect. Mr. Um, does anyone have any questions of Mr. Wilmot at this time? Go ahead, Mr. Charlebois. Thank you. Just looking at this, uh, at this one-story addition, although there's some comments in here, I just wanted to confirm again, this is a 
a community amenity space for everyone in the complex. That's what it is. Yes, and yeah. there's uh, some office minor, very minor office adjustments yeah. as well. But, but it is a community. Yeah. And no, space. no additional residential going into here. No. Okay. Thanks. Any further questions of Mr. Wamat at this time? Mr. Wamat, if you have nothing further to add and you're satisfied with the conditions, we can take this matter into committee. Very well. Okay. Mr. Talowski, you're ready for a motion? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'm satisfied that this application meets the four tests of the Planning Act. I find this to be a desirable addition to the community. I don't see that there'd be any impact on the adjacent property. So I would move that the application be approved. I'd also note that there was no ob objection to this application. I'd move it be approved subject to the two conditions recommended by staff, that the development proceed in general accordance with the drawings and that a permit issue within two years. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Talowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? The application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next item on our agenda is CAV 022 of 2019 at 326 Morrison Road. Hi, Thank good evening. You. Thank you and good evening, Madam Chair, Denise Baker. Good evening, Ms. Baker. Is there anyone here in attendance for CAV 022 of 2019 at 326 Morrison Road? I see none. Ms. Baker, the floor is yours. If you have anything further to add or reflect on the application, it's the time to do so. It's one story garage studio that's being replaced with a two story. Yes, it's a, it's a one and a half story, um, sort of the second story tucked in the eaves. We have reviewed the comments provided by planning staff. We are supportive of those comments in that the proposed application meets the four tests and we are supportive of the three conditions that uh, are provided as it relates to this application. Very well. Are there any questions of Ms. Baker at this time? I see none. If you have nothing further to add, we will take this matter into committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Mr. Hardcastle, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. You got there before I did. Um, <laughs> no, I saw you reaching. <laughs> I did. I had my eye on you. Um, yeah, having undertaken my site visit, um, uh, reviewed the materials, including the staff report, I'm satisfied that the requested uh, variance is conformed to the four tests of the Act. I'll put forward a motion of approval, noting um, this, is a, this is a large lot uh, with a unique configuration, uh, and the uh, proposed modifications to the or replacement structure uh, will have uh, little to no impact upon adjacent property, so I can support this, uh, subject to the three conditions that are noted within uh, the staff report, those being that the accessory building uh, not be used as a separate self-contained uh, second dwelling unit, the second being that the garage studio be built in, a, in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations dated January 17th, 2019. And the third being that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if a permit has not been issued. Very well, thank you, Mr. Hardgassel. Is, uh, is there any discussion on this recommendation? I see none, all those in support? Okay, the application has been approved, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hmm? Okay, so the next item on our agenda is CAV 023 of 2019 at 200 Morrison Road. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Joel Tanner, authorized representative for the clients. Address is 97 James Street North in Hamilton, Ontario. Thank you. Um, who is here for application CAV 023 of 2019 at 200 Morrison Road? I see none. Okay, so you're, um, you're aware that town staff is not in support of uh, five of your eight variances? Correct. Okay, so you'll take us through your application? 
Most certainly. So I'm going to focus mainly on the points where um, there is a little bit of disagreement amongst the parties, um, rather than focusing on the items where we, we both agree. Um, first off, I want to start by saying that this is a very technically driven application. Um, we've been working on it for the past six or seven months in very tight coordination with um, town staff being Brandon, as well as Kate prior to leaving the division, um, as well as Conservation Halton, our surveyors. Um, we are dealing with some pretty substantial floodplain issues at the rear of the building. Um, as you can tell, likely from your site visits, there is some fairly substantial gradation both from Morrison Road uh, westerly up to the front entry door of the home, and then again, um, both from north to south and then again from uh, east to west on the property. So there's a lot of gradation to take into consideration during the design process. Um, that's really the driver. I'm just going to shift the rendering over here. Um, the gradient on the property when, when looking from Morrison Road is a gradient from right to left, which is why we're driving the overall building volume to, to, to downscape from right to left um, for more cohesive um, cohesiveness within the property scape. Um, so I'm gonna jump into the variances. Um, when it comes to the balconies, um, so really balcony is driven off of variance number one and variance number five. I'm gonna put up the rear elevation so you can get an understanding on what the rear balcony is. Um, so that, that is the rear facade. So you're seeing a, a full three-story um, rear facade on the back of the building, again, based on grades. I'm just gonna go back to the front elevation. Um, where you are only seeing the two the two story. Um, please keep in mind that the the neighbor to the north, um, they are on the highest grade point. Um, the existing bungalow does have a rear balcony and it is an existing walkout condition. So we are driving uh, design based on existing conditions of that dwelling. Um, the the other thing to keep in mind is the neighbors on the far westerly, the other side of the ravine, so far west, they're quite high graded so they're actually their basements are likely looking out on our third story so i know that there is a denotation regarding um, you know potential impact on the rear westerly neighbors with this three-story facade we tend to disagree just you know based on the fact that there is very substantial gradation after the ravine up towards those neighborly properties uh, variance number six i've already started to dive into number six um, regarding the, the maximum number of stories. So again, because of the gradation we have on the property, uh, that is driving a walkout condition. Um, as a design firm, we have to look at what the client have, has invested into the existing property, what the client is then gonna spend on uh, the new dwelling. Um, and we, need, we do need to design for, um, you know, what is happening in that neighborhood. Um, if we because of the Halton conservation restrictions, we had to bring the building up quite drastically and we, we appreciate the fact that the city is on board with us moving the dwelling that close to Morrison Road, which is still in keeping with the rest of the facades on the street. Um, but it does crunch our building envelope, so we can't actually get away with building, um, you know, a decent-sized house with a, with simply a bungalow design and walkout condition, um, and have the investment pan out for the client, um, monetarily speaking. Um, they also have quite a large family, so we want to make sure that there's space for all the family members. Um, last item and bone of contention would be um, regarding the height. Um, we do realize that the maximum height allowance is 9 meters in the area. Um, we are currently sitting at 11.04. Uh, please bear in mind that 11.04 is measured from the established grade at Morrison Road. Uh, there's a 1.23 meter gradation upward from Morrison to the front entry door, uh, which is accounting for some of the fairly substantial deviation. Um, so measuring the actual height of the building itself on the front property um, from, the, from the grade line um, up to the peak, we're actually sitting closer to somewhere in the range of 9.8 meters. Uh, the other driver on why the house is sitting higher, you can tell there's a full set of stairs coming up from the driveway, wrapping around the retaining wall to the front porch. Um, there's a driver there with Halton Conservation and the fact that we do need to, to sit that basement slab at a very specific elevation. That is basically pushing our entire building envelope up. So that item in combination of the, um, you know, of the positive so from Morrison up to the entry door is what's driving those variables and pushing us in, up into that 11 meter height, vari uh, height variation. Um, at this time, if there's any questions, I'd be more than happy to dive into some additional information. Thank you. Are there any questions at this time? 
Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. I agree with you this is very technical driven variance. Is it purely the um, amount of the basement that's exposed that is driving the requirement to count the basement as the first floor? That's exactly what's happening. That's correct. Um, so the, the other note that doesn't come up in the committee application is when you have a three-story dwelling, um, they're also looking at GFA calculations as the basement, the main floor, and the third floor all coming into GFA. So we're actually landing even below with including that entire walkout basement, we're still below the allowable GFA regulation for the area. Um, so we aren't triggering a GFA application, nor are we triggering a, uh, a lot coverage application. So and I think we've seen these before. If you <clears throat> actually were to build a retaining wall on the property line and bring the grade up around the wall, you'd actually be looking at a two-story house with a main floor uh, deck as opposed to a, a three-story house with a second floor balcony. Correct. And what we're trying to do is embrace the, embrace the landscape. Um, it's a beautiful backyard, what exists today and what it's going to be once completed. Um, there's, there's a great ravine. There's tons of trees on the property. That's the other thing that help. You don't see it in this rendering, but from a massing standpoint, when you're standing on 200 Morris and we've got very, very substantial vegetation that's helping to create a nice facade from the street, um, which I think is a driver on why, you know, in visiting neighbors and having discussions with neighbors, there aren't any concerns. There's no letters of, of of, um, you know, uh, of opposition. Um, we have a, an institutional facility to the, uh, to the south of us. And again, we're trying to embrace, you know, the scaling and massing of that property, which actually sits lower because the grade just continues to fall. So th there's definitely a lot of variables at play, but we do want to embrace that landscape at the rear. Thank you, Mr. Tosky. Mr. Charlevoix, go ahead, sir. <clears throat> you mentioned that you've been working with the uh, with the town on this. Correct, yeah. Um, and you heard sort of one suggestion here from Mr. Talowski about how you can get around that. Yeah. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, usually when somebody's working closely with the town, the town can sort of come to some, and, and the applicant can come to some sort of uh, arrangement. Yep. What was it about what the town was suggesting that, uh, that you felt you couldn't do? Uh, I think that everything that we've discussed with the town um, was embraced in the application. I think um, because the the details aren't fully analyzed until you make an official application and the zoning officer actually reviews and comments on the, the application, you're all, we're only getting so much feedback from, from Brandon and his team. Um, so I think in, in direct collaboration with Brandon and with, uh, with Conservation Hall, I think we made huge headway. Um, and I think at the end of the day, the you know, unless we chop off the second floor of the dwelling um, and eliminate our, you know, our height variance and our three-story dwelling variances, that, you know, technically speaking, that's, that's really only how we're going to get to a level playing field. Um, being that, you know, most structures that are getting rebuilt in East Oakville, or, or for most parts of Oakville period, um, are a two-story, um, I think it's hard for us to embrace the proposal of a bungalow on this property simply because of the fact that um, you know the driver is that it's a three-story rear facade not a three-story uh, frontal facade um, in combination again with conservation and the fact that we can't I can't sink the home into the ground and then come out of the basement and up a set of stairs which we've done in the past as well on Pinehurst in order to deviate um, you know just like you'd mentioned um, we don't have that flexibility so working with conservation lower head's been amazing to work with um, and we've you know I think we've gotten to a point where they're quite satisfied with the application as well in terms of where the house sits uh, you know in its elevation and grading patterns um, but again there's I think there's only so far we can go um, to get exactly on the same page, unfortunately. I've got one other question. Go ahead. Actually, for, for planning. Um, your stance with respect to the three stories and the balconies is essentially that these are prohibited. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any uh, flexibility in, in, in how you presented this with respect to the technical things that were brought up here. Is, is anything changing your mind now with respect to that? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, kind of going back to, I guess, in a couple applications that we had about a year ago, I believe, um, there are ways in which that can be dealt with, being retaining walls, 
changes in grading. Um, as the agent had noted, we haven't gone through a development engineering site plan review process yet, so coming up with those solutions um, haven't been identified yet. But in terms of the, the scale of the zoning bylaw and the wording that uh, is within it, Prohibit is, is very strong in its intent to uh, not have these variances that are being sought um, supported by staff. It is understood that there are technical constraints on the property. It is, again, just the prohibition and the wording of that in terms of being able to support it. And just a note regarding the DSP, my apologies on cutting off. Um, we actually did make application for DSP. We received comments back, um, the, and everybody is in support of the application. There were some very, very minor modifications made um, in order to keep conservation. There's a very, very small um, area here where we're actually regrading. Um, so there's some volume dis discussions with Conservation Halton, but in terms of the DESP, I would say we're about 95% there on an approval. Um, there's no issues in terms of tree, uh, tree removals. There haven't been any negative, uh, hasn't been any negative feedback from engineering regarding our proposal. Um, so we, we actually did things in tandem. Um, we applied for the DESP right at the start of January. We waited about five weeks before applying for the variances, um, knowing that the DESP application was, was progressing quite rapidly. Um, so it, it, it seems to be quite positive from an engineering standpoint. This may be an unfair question for you then, in respect to that, uh, but if, how much, how much flexibility would conservation have to give you in, in, in uh, setting the depth of your basement for this all it of a sudden not to be a three-story? Won't happen. No. Zero, zero, zero. And it's, and this is even, so, you know, getting into it a little bit deeper, there was actually an error made during the initial survey work. And so um, our understanding initially was that the floodplain was going to be at the rear of the property, which would have allowed us to move things around a little bit. Three months down the road, after dealing with Brandon, dealing with the design, dealing with Laura Head, we got thrown a bit of a wrench um, come you know early October. So that really, really pushed us. We had to push the, the house significantly further to the east, closer to Morrison Road. We had to cut off the garage and sh shift and tweak. Um, but we're at the point now where there is, there's zero room for movement with conservation, and we've kind of pulled all the strings we could. And my question is more about, so if conservation could give you another foot, does it work or is it two feet, is it three feet or is this, is this like we're literally, so far out of it? We're within millimeters right now yeah. of where we need to be. Um, so, so it's, it, we, yeah, we're literally in the, within millimeters. Um, so so they'll, they're very, very stuck on that plane and they won't deviate from that, that slab plane. Different focus. If, if, if conservation authority allowed you to go down a few millimeters, all of a sudden these variances wouldn't count, or how much would they have to? How much would you have to go down before this would not be a three-story, considered to be a three-story, and, and that balcony would just be uh, a normal walkout? We'd probably have to drop in the range of five and a half to six and a half feet. And how high is your basement? Uh, you probably got it here, but I didn't look at it. Yeah, 10 foot ceiling. 10 foot ceiling. So yeah. you have to drive five and a half to six feet, so a four foot basement before you could conform. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we've done that, we have done that in the past where we're, we were able to do the walkout condition. Um, but it's, it's just about, yeah, it's, 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 it is impossible. I wouldn't want to say impossible, but it is essentially impossible here just because of the restrictions with conservation. Mr. Tlowski, you have a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Another question for staff. Uh, I mean, uh, like Mr. Charlevoix, I too is uh, quite surprised at the strong stance that staff is taking here. Um, I, I see a two-story house with a first floor balcony that's responding to the hand it was dealt by the lot that it's sitting on and that it's only a technicality on the ex amount of the basement wall that's exposed. Uh, do you not see it the same way, that this is really a two-story house with a first-floor balcony? Or do you, does staff honestly believe that this is a three-story house with a second-floor balcony and the bylaw prohibits both, therefore there's no flexibility? It seems like a very strong stance on a technicality. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, in terms of the internal discussions that we had um, with staff and the commenting team, 
visually, again, from Morrison Road, you do see the two stories. It is the, the wording in the bylaw and the measurement of the grading on the property that triggers the additional story and the additional requirement for the balcony. And again, that being said, in terms of the, the deviation from the bylaw going from is permitted to prohibited, um, and that's where staff was coming from in terms of, of setting that precedent. Any further questions? I see none. Mr. Tanner, if you have nothing further to add, we can take this matter into committee. Yes, there was none. Do you want me to ask it? Sir, you came in late. Are you here for this application? The gentleman standing in the back. Oh, okay. We, we kind of made us nervous because we weren't sure if we missed someone. Thank you. Uh, yes? Oh, were you in speaking for this application? Oh, I'm sorry. I did not see your hand. I did ask if someone was attending for this application. Um, Mr. Tanner, if you'd be you kind enough to sit down and I'll invite the neighbor to uh, speak. You can thank the Secretary Treasurer for reminding me because I, I did ask, but I didn't see a hand to go up. Your name and address for the record, please. My name is Jack Brandt. I'm the neighbor to the north. Sure. And this is the first time that I'm attending such an event. Um, we were away on business and vacation, and I just came back on Sunday evening, and that's maybe also why we're a little bit uh, badly prepared. Um, <clears throat> I'm a layman at this, but I, I read the, um, the variance request, and in my opinion, um, as a layman, these variance requests are not minor, but major. Uh, and I, I don't think I have to go through all, all of them, but I, I, I would assume that staff um, can interpret that uh, a little bit better. Our concerns are um, the sheer size of the house. We want our neighbors to have a beautiful home, and uh, we, we met on one or two occasions. Um, but I have some very simple questions. My, besides my major point basically being that I think these variances are major. As an example, the length of the house, if I read this correct, um, it says the maximum dwelling depth shall be 20 meters, and to, to permit, the request is to, mit, to permit a maximum dwelling depth of 27.49. I think that's um, quite substantial, and the reason why we're a little bit concerned about oh, that is when, when we face south, um, you know, at the moment, obviously, we're looking at trees, and this sort of being a three-story dwelling, it, um, you know, we're going to be looking at a building instead. I don't know whether that's an argument um, uh, for... For, for you people, um, we are concerned also about the, we have a tree, almost or two trees very close to the property line, and we, we like, I think the root system is going to be affected because the canopy uh, goes all over to the neighbor's property, so I don't know what can be done about that. But when the building goes up at the height it is proposed, um, especially in the winter time, at, at the in the basement we have a we have a study and we have also um, a bedroom. That um, that's going to be a light issue, especially during the winter times. I think it's going to be dark. So those are our concerns. Um, mm, maybe a little bit close to the border in terms of privacy issues. I don't know whether those arguments count. No, everything that you, uh, you submit as your um, concerns are definitely valid 
yeah. for you, and we're happy to hear them. I've never done this before. <laughs> no, not, there's no pressure whatsoever. We're here to listen. We are here to serve the community. Um, I understand that the impact on you is primarily the trees on the property line, the size of the home, uh, although we don't have a, um, well, we do a garage area, and height and the shadowing on your uh, basement. And if the members of the committee don't have any questions of Mr. Brandt, then I will direct Mr. Um, Tanner to uh, comment on your concerns. Okay. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Tanner? I see none. Thank you, sir, for your submission. We'll have Mr. Tanner comment on your concerns. Thanks. So I'll just sketch over, uh, I'm just gonna sketch over top of the site plan just so there's a, a good understanding for the north neighbor on where the building positions are. So this is the existing single family on the north side of the property line. Uh, so two story number 210. Um, our current building envelope proposal, so this first segment is the, um, that's the main floor building footprint. The second line here is the balcony projection. Um, so because of the floodplain issues that we're dealing with, so we've got the floodplain running through here um, we've positioned the building in such a format that um, we're not affecting any of that afternoon sun. So afternoon sun's basically coming through your property here. Um, and there's going to be no, there's going to be no effects on that basement space or the basement den. Um, the second, uh, the second item I just want to quickly touch on is regarding the dwelling depth. So dwelling depth, um, we're actually, we're actually measuring to um, a point here you're going to see. So this is the second story line. And then this here is just a single story. So a lot of that projection uh, that we're seeking uh, beyond that allowable 20 meter depth is um, shift this over. Um, so you're seeing a single, well, let's call it a story and a half um, brick feature wall. So this entire wing wall is being measured in that dwelling depth. Uh, and it is only single story. So I'll just give you one more cross-reference here. Um, so in terms of dwelling depth, we're, we're looking at 27 and a half. Um, with the removal of that front arm extension and the rear balcony projection, we're probably closer to the 22 meter mark in terms of what is the actual um, gross second story building footprint, which would in turn be affecting um, sun angle, uh, morning sun angle. And I think the last item is the trees on uh, the trees. property line. Yes, my apologies. I need another color. Um, so in terms of vegetation, we are um, we have a full arborist report that we can uh, we can show to the north uh, to the north neighbor. Um, but we are basically in terms of vegetation throughout this entire zone. Um, we are looking at keeping the hedges, um, north neighbor trees here, which are remaining intact north neighbor trees here remaining intact. Um, there's a full arborist report. There are comments that, there, that during excavation on that north wall, we're either gonna be looking at shoring um, for proximity to root systems to minimize damage, and that arborist is on, on, um, on the property during excavation to minimize any impact on those neighbors. Um, that's all driven off of comments during the DESP application. Um, so it sounds that the town is in favor of what we've proposed from a, a tree impact standpoint. Very well, thank you, Mr. Tanner. Uh, yes. Mr. Brandt, is your address 210? Yes. yes, it's 210. Are there any questions of Mr. Tanner at this time? I see none. Um, Mr. Tanner, if you're satisfied with, um, with the, the time that we've spent uh, and you've uh, given all your submissions and ready for us to take this matter into committee, we're happy to do that. Absolutely. Thanks so much, committee. Very good. Who would like to move a motion? Mr. T Mr. Charlebois, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, um, just having conducted my site visit and 
reviewed the applicant's written submission as well as the written, town's written staff report, noting that the town is not supportive of variances one, five, six, seven, and eight, and they are supportive of two, three, and four. Also taking into account uh, the comments from the, uh, the public tonight, noting that there's no written objections or, or letters of support. And, uh, and also taking into account the, the presentation, uh, which was excellent, um, I have to admit. Um, I certainly would have loved to have seen a lot of this information while I was doing my review and being out there, because now it's a lot more difficult to try and remember what the site looks like um, and, uh, and, and take in this information here. Um, this committee's had to deal, in my opinion, with, with a lot of, well, not a lot, but uh, uh, enough floodplain issues where the remaining lands that can be built, built on have got uh, a variety of, of, of restrictions placed upon it. Um, in the past, though, what I've, what I've seen is, is I've seen that the applicant and the town have worked out something. Sometimes it's a little, it's a little strange and it's a little weird, um, and it can take some real explaining, uh, at least to, to me, to, for me to grasp the whole thing, but I can appreciate all the restrictions that are here. The difficulty I'm having with this particular one is I'm not, sh I'm not sure that what I'm being presented here is the only solution. In many cases, that's what happens. Someone, the, 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 the staff and, and the applicant will come forward and will say, we've literally looked at everything and this is all that we can do and therefore it may blow through tons of the, the zoning bylaw, but um, uh, we just think that this is the right thing to do on, on this thing and this is the very best solution we can come up with. I'm just not getting that at this stage, despite the fact if, I think if, if staff had been supportive, sir, of your application, I actually think what you've done is really good. I actually like the building and I can see some of the constraints that you're at, but I guess from my point of view, I'm not convinced from where staff's position is uh, that, that we've exhausted all the possibilities in terms of, of having to agree to this many variances. So on that basis, I'm going to find that I'm, I'm more swayed by uh, staff's opinion and perhaps the lack of detail that, that's in here, and I'm going to put forward a motion that this particular application be denied. Is there a discussion on this recommendation, Mr. Talowski? I'm sure you're not surprised. No, I'm not because I, uh, well, I'll say my comments when you're done, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, Madam Chair, I'm going to take a completely opposite position. Uh, this is a technical variance. This is a two-story house with a main floor a balcony, both of which are permitted. I, while I can agree with staff that it's the intent of the bylaw not to permit three-story houses and second-floor balconies, I cannot accept that it's in the intent of the bylaw to prohibit based on technicalities. And contrary to Mr. Charlevoix's opinion, I fear that the committee turns this application down. The other alternative that uh, Mr. Charlevoix is talking about is going to be far worse than what we're seeing here today. And, you know, the applicant's going to come back with retaining walls on the property line. Um, it's, I, I just, I can't accept that argument that they're, there's going to be a better solution. Madam Chair, I, I'll say it again. This is a two-story house without a second-story balcony. The technicality on the grading, the applicant's done an excellent job in trying to work with a difficult site. I believe he responded to the concerns of the neighbor to the north uh, very well, and I believe this application should be approved, so I will not support the motion on the table. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Talowski, uh, for your submission. Um, since Mr. Um, Charlebois moved the motion and you've commented on the motion, I would like to speak to the motion. So, Mr. Hardcastle, would you take the chair for a brief moment? I will. Thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Um, 
given the fact that Mr. Talowski has commented on this so eloquently, I will not rehash um, my um, opinions um, are very similar to his. I do see the efforts that the applicant has made to deal with the um, restrictions on this property, and I am swayed by uh, their presentation um, and their efforts. Um, and while I don't tend to disagree with um, staff's uh, comments, in this particular case, I, I believe that um, everything has been exhausted and the end result is actually desirable for the development of this property. Um, it's it's very, it, very pleasing to the, um, to the neighborhood. It fits within Morrison Road very well. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you for uh, indulging me and taking the chair for a few moments. You're welcome. Okay, so is there further discussion on this recommendation? And the recommendation before us is to deny this application. I see none, so we'll take this matter into committee. Um, all those in support of the denial of the application? Okay, all those against? Okay, so that, uh, that motion has failed. Mr. Tlaski, would you like to do the honors and propose another? Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I will move that this application be approved as applied for, finding that it does meet the four tests of the Planning Act. Um, I think I've stated my reasons. I, I won't reiterate them. I will, uh, again, acknowledge that a member of the community did speak, and I was swayed by the uh, response of the applicant to addressing those concerns. Uh, Madam Chair, I would uh, make the uh, motion for approval subject to two conditions, that the development proceed in general accordance with the drawings provided, and uh, that a permit issue within two years. January 31st. Thank you, Mr. Talowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I th oh, okay. Well, Mr. Flemington, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to further uh, acknowledge the comments that uh, my colleague has mentioned with regards to supporting this application. I know that there are times when uh, we review it in advance and then when the applicant comes and makes a presentation, um, basically how it is being designed, taking into account the floodplain and the grading issues, uh, trying to accommodate Halton conservations um, and you know further saying that it is a technical variance as well as the height I recognize you know that the height issue uh, based on you know where it's measured from and uh, you know where the actual height is based on uh, I, I think that is another thing you know that I, I'm okay with um, so I'd like to support the the motion very well thank you mr. Flemington for your comments. Any others? Okay, I see none. Uh, all those in support in approving the application is submitted with, the, with set conditions. All those against? Okay, Mr. Charlotte. Thank you. Your application has been approved, Mr. Tanner. Okay, the uh, next item on our agenda is uh, CAV 024 of 2019 at 552 Weir Avenue. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Joris Kieran, Kieran Design. Good evening, Mr. Kieran. Who is here for application CAV 024 of 2019 at 552 Weir Avenue? I see a few hands up. Are you in opposition or in support? Opposition, very well. So Mr. Keelan, you'll take us through your application and then we'll invite the neighbors to uh, share their concerns. Very well. I'll start with um, a brief discussion about the proposed dwelling and then I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the street and the neighborhood as well. So the, 
I, I don't mean to interrupt you, I apologize. Uh, gentlemen, if you can take this outside of the trim, gentlemen, gentlemen, the voice carries, so please exit the atrium. Thank you. I apologize for that. Go no ahead, problem. sir. So we'll start with the site plan, and uh, this is basically to demonstrate a couple of points that we're um, complying with all the setbacks. We're allowing for a little bit of extra space on the one side yard. Um, we are also allowing for a little bit of extra space in the rear yard. We are under on lot coverage. We are basically at the height limit, so we're, we're not asking for any other variances other than the uh, increase in RFA. Um, there's also about eight trees on the property, which um, the, the owner intends to preserve as many of those as possible. We don't have uh, an exact reading on all the uh, conditions of these trees yet, but um, I know there's a, uh, an intention to preserve as many as uh, possible. The, uh, the floor plan is uh, a fairly straightforward uh, layout, open concept. Total square footage is about 3,300. Um, it's a four bedroom home. And as is noted in the staff report, this is where we did cooperate with, um, with planning staff, where we uh, made some reductions. We reduced the um, the dwelling by over 100 square feet from its original design. We also um, set back the second floor uh, along the rear and the sides, which is best demonstrated on the floor plan. I'll show you the elevations in a minute, but this was one of the requests uh, made by planning staff, which we uh, accommodated. And this is basically to uh, reduce the massing uh, from the, uh, the sides and the rear. Uh, you can see the, the line of the first floor, which is uh, this line here, and you can see that the second floor is set back uh, substantially from that, and that's a result of the, uh, the uh, collaboration that we had with uh, planning staff. The front elevation and the side elevation. And the rear elevation and the other side elevation. It's basically a stone and stucco uh, dwelling. Now I'll move on to the um, brief discussion about the, uh, the area and the street itself. Okay, I'm trying to zoom it, but it's not working. I've highlighted the subject property, and what I wanted to mention is, you can barely see it here, number two, which is the house uh, next door immediately to the west. Uh, my office uh, designed a house for that property in 2014, and um, it's this house here. The subject property is over here. For that property, we obtained variances um, that were actually uh, quite a bit higher than, than this one for, for RFA. We, we, we were approved for an RFA of 45.1%. Uh, uh, we're, we're asking for only 43.9% in this case. That house also had a lot coverage variance. It also had a garage area increase variance granted, and the height was also um, 9.15. And that, and that is the house immediately next door. So that's just to demonstrate that the, uh, the scale of the house being proposed um, is not out of character with what's happening in the immediate area. This house here, um, I'm not sure if there was a variance granted for this, so I'm not gonna claim it was, but the massing of it is basically equal to what we're proposing. Going back to the map, we have another property which is in the corner. Uh, my firm is also working on plans for a house uh, to be constructed starting in the spring, uh, and that house is approximately 4,200 square feet. It won't require any variances, but that's just to demonstrate again the, um, the uh, scale of the dwellings that are being proposed 
uh, and that are existing and also being proposed uh, in, uh, on the street. And lastly, there is a uh, fairly substantial addition renovation uh, that's underway. Here. Well, I think it's completed now, but it's on, at, uh, at the corner here. Uh, so that's just really... Uh, that's okay. I'm, I'm done anyway. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, that's just basically to demonstrate the, uh, the activity on the street. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kieran. Are there any questions of Mr. Kieran at this time? I see none. So I'll invite the uh, neighbors to speak one at a time. Uh, good evening, my name's uh, Adam Clark. I live at 557 Wellington Crescent. So Clark? I live Clark with an E. Uh, so I live uh, sort of kitty corner to the back side of the of the uh, the proposed. Your park address there. again? Five five seven Wellington Crescent. Five five seven Wellington. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. Uh, so I'm relatively new to the area, and uh, I noticed the, uh, the the designer did drop off the uh, the house design yesterday, which I do appreciate. Um, and I was excited when it was a green design. I know it's a transitioning neighborhood. Uh, so I appreciate the, the work that they do do because they do make, make a nice looking house that does fit into uh, to the community feel as well. Uh, one of the concerns I do have is that when we start planning for the, for the houses, we're looking at human wants rather than human needs uh, that we're proposing is that we have. So when they proposed uh, the one for the, the current one that he showed that they redesigned, uh, they asked for a larger size. And now once again, it's being asked for a larger size. Um, with, and I know we're in the, the transitioning neighborhood, but the house number uh, that directs back on to me, 556, is a rental property. And I've picked up pretty quickly the theme of if there's a rental property, it's pretty quick to go down. Um, then also 568 is a rental property on the back side of that street as well as Weir. So the fear that I have with the, the human want rather than the human need is the, the committee keeps on granting a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. And as we're granting a bit more, it's starting to in, uh, inflict on the, the privacy of neighbors, uh, starting to conflict with the, the environment as well. They talked about the trees on the property, and some of these trees are reaching 50 feet tall uh, and have been there for, for quite some time. And I know we, the city has the, the Replace the Tree program, but uh, a 50-foot tree replaced with a, a five-foot tree, there is a bit of a difference. Uh, when my wife and I chose to move to Oakville, uh, it was because of the mature neighborhood uh, that it is, and that's because of the trees that are surrounded. Uh, so the concern that I have with it is I, I, I appreciate the drawings of the Korean. I appreciate their, desi or their designs, but the concern I have is that human want of always wanting a bit more. And that's what this is, is showing tonight is they want a bit more of the land for the house that they're using. Uh, if the house directly goes behind us, they apply for a bit more and it's granted, the precedence is set, we can always get two, three percent more as we're going down the line as well. So as a neighbor within the community, uh, that, that's my concern. Um, although Mr. Kieran did speak about uh, homes in the area, and in, in this case, uh, directly adjacent to this property that have had variances approved, that that's not necessarily uh, a guarantee that these homes will be granted the same variance. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have to look at impact and we have to look at the entire neighborhood. We have to look at um, the application as a whole. And while we try not to set a precedent, um, um, someone will argue it uh, over time. It stopped once before. Yeah. So um, I, I understand your submission and I, I appreciate that. In, in terms of the impact on yourself directly, if you can just comment as well. Yes, yeah, so on we back, we're, we're kitty corner with, with that property right That, that the, the house is going to be extended back. We do have a pool in our backyard. I do have quite a young family as well. Uh, if those trees, and they say they would like to preserve the trees as best as possible, uh, I've seen that effect within the community already when the orange fences go up. Um, the trees are cut, still can be cut down. And when we have 45 foot trees on the property that do offer us uh, lovely greenery, especially in the summer, uh, not so much right now, but especially in the summer, uh, it does give us privacy with our pool as well. Um, and I do appreciate that you guys do take this into consideration that you will eventually say no, which you have done if they're asking for too much um, as well. You, the other thing that I, I'd like to point out is the applicant is not requesting a height variance. They're not requesting any side yard setback variances. So the only thing that they are requesting is an increased 
uh, in the floor area. So in terms of massing, um, that's pretty much what we're looking at. In, and, yeah, and from my understanding, is, like so the, uh, is the variance design for the appropriate development or land use, um, yep. and bigger houses is not the best solution for land use. And we appreciate your submission. Um, are there any questions of Mr. Clark? I see none. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. So the, the other thing, I'll, I'll let Mr. Kieran speak to it. You, you, you will be obtaining a site alteration permit, so the trees will be taken into consideration because this is a new construction, correct? That is correct, uh, Madam Chair. We, we, we have not applied for a uh, development engineering permit yet, but we will. Uh, that's going to be accompanied with a, uh, an arbor support and uh, appropriate tree protection measures. Very well, thank you for that. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Ray Kulig, um, K-U-L-I-G. K-U-L-I-G, in your address? 553 Wellington. 553 Wellington, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that um, in the uh, official plan, as was mentioned earlier this evening, um, item 11A states to maintain, protect, and enhance the character of residential areas. Planning services outright rejected Kieran's first proposal. Planning services' new comment is that the proposed dwelling would have a mass and scale that appears similar to the dwellings in the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, the only mass and scale that it appears similar to, this new monstrosity, is, that, is the other monster homes on the street. And it, it just seems um, this uh, two wrongs make a right argument you know, showing pictures of other ridiculous homes that have been built on the street and using that as a rationale to build another one really makes no sense. Um, you know, like everyone is doing it. I'm sure your parents at some point said to you, well, if everyone jumped in the lake. Um, item 11E states to encourage the conservation and rehabilitation of older housing in order to maintain the stability and character of the existing stable residential community. Well, the stable residential community in this area, um, notwithstanding the, the picture of the two other monster homes on Weir, is, is the bungalows. And, um, you know, small homes on large lots. The people in the monster homes, well, first of all, it takes about three years for them to be built. And then for a year and a half to two years, the thing sits vacant. Uh, my lawyer tells me it's because they're holding out, pretending it's their principal residence so that they don't have to pay capital gains. But it, that's the stable residential neighborhood, not these homes that this, these cute little pictures show. Uh, I think the bottom line is, why would a developer design a house that he knows is inappropriate? I mean, I can see variances needed in an existing structure. Someone in the family becomes immobilized. We have to apply for a ramp. Um, someone, uh, a couple people on Wellington have asked for sunrooms. No one objected, so they got their sunrooms. Uh, a beautiful little house on uh, Weir asked to take their um, garage, make it a coach house, and put a new garage in front. No one objected. Um, but wh why would a professional architect intentionally, consciously, premeditatively develop a plan that he knows violates the bylaw? Um, you know, another thing your parents probably told you is ignorance is no excuse. And I would ask the planning department, why are we rewarding incompetence? There's, you, you know the rules coming in. Why do you intentionally break them and then hold up other rule breakers as your rationale? Thank you. Before you leave, are there any questions of Mr. Kulig at this time? I see none. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who'd like to address the committee or those were the only two hands up? I thought I saw more than one. You said it all very well. Okay, thank you. Mr. Kieran, if you care to comment and address the neighbor's concerns. I'll try. Mm. 
the, um, the variance that we're requesting is um, much smaller than the variance that was granted for the house next door. And there's only one variance we're asking for uh, versus, I think, five that we were approved for on the, on the house next door. So this house is actually smaller. Um, the other thing that people may not be aware of is that if we were to reduce the residential floor area to comply, uh, it would be barely noticeable to the, uh, the outside um, appearance of the home. Uh, Two-story dwellings are permitted by this zone. Uh, houses of that footprint size are permitted in this zone. Uh, and therefore, uh, whether you know, it's comparable with what was built 50 years ago, um, the scale of, of houses like this are permitted by the zoning bylaw. Uh, you know, not, notwithstanding the 200 extra square feet that we're asking for in this case, but like I said, that would be uh, barely noticeable. Um, the trees that we're, I think there was a question about the trees, uh, and I'll just reiterate what I said in my uh, original comments, which is um, there are eight trees that we are hoping to preserve. Um, we can't guarantee that they will all be preserved, but I, I would assume that we can preserve the majority of them. And it's certainly uh, the owner's intent to uh, make an effort towards that goal. Thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Kieran at this time? I see none. Um, if you're satisfied with the uh, staff uh, suggested uh, conditions, then we can take this matter into committee. Mr. Kieran? Yes. Okay. All right. Who is ready for a motion? Mr. Flemington, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, having conducted my site visit and uh, having reviewed the applicant's written submission, as well as the town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is in support of, and also having taken into account the comments that have been presented by the applicant this evening, as well as the uh, presentations and questions and submissions from the public, uh, noting that there uh, were some objections and that there were uh, two written uh, letters of objection as well. Um, I am going to move a motion. I just want to note that, um, you know, part of this process, I know we have the, uh, the Planning Act and um, I, I thank the applicant for uh, reducing the massing size uh, of the building from its initial submission, uh, basically trying to take into account, uh, you know, the, neighbor, the neighborhood. Um, as well as, you know, the notes with regards to, um, you know, trying to make an effort to preserve the, uh, the trees, although that's not one of the, um, one of the variances here. It is just a uh, 223 square foot uh, addition and the, the, the residential floor area, I find it minor in nature. Um, so I think that this, does meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I'd like to move that it be approved as applied for uh, with the following two um, conditions. That the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations dated January 29th, 2019, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction and in cases where a building permit is not required that the proposed scope of work has not been fully completed. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay. All those against, well, they have all support. Thank you, your application has been approved. Thank you. The uh, next item on our agenda is CEV 026 of 2019 at 125 Douglas Avenue. Hi. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Hey, good. Thanks. Adam Schuler, S-C-H-U-L-E-R. Good evening, Mr. Schuler. Who is here for application CEV 026 of 2019 at 125 Douglas Avenue? Are you in opposition or in support? In support. Are you... And you? 
You're in support. Are they with you? Uh, yes, ma'am. They're the applicants? That's my wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. And right. They're our neighbors. Okay, very well. Soon um, to be. Very well, thank you. Um, Mr. Schuler. this time is yours. We are familiar with your application. It's a new construction of a new home. You're asking for one variance being the coverage. Um, if you have any further uh, comments to add to your application, we're happy to hear them now. Yeah, I've, I've, I've read the staff report and uh, it's, everything's basically what I'm asking for. So I would agree with it. Very well. Are there any questions of Mr. Schuler at this time? I see none. Okay, if you're satisfied with staff comments and their proposed conditions, we are ready to take the matter into committee. Oh, yes, ma'am. Very well. Who is ready? Mr. Talowski, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, this application reminds me a little of the earlier one tonight where the community was voicing frustration on incremental variances and the timing. And I recall when this uh, severance came before the committee, uh, sorry, sorry. Um, when this came before the committee, I was concerned that they were seeking a variance and this was going to come back um, seeking more variances once the house was presented. But, uh, having said that, when I review what we're presented with here tonight, uh, I find no impact that from this variance and uh, I'm happy to move approval of the application subject to the conditions requested by staff. And uh, the dwelling be developed in general accordance with the drawings and that the permit issue within two years. And I would note uh, a number of uh, letters of support from the community. Very well, thank you, Mr. Talowski. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none, all those in support? Your application has been approved, thank you. Thank you. So the uh, last item on our agenda tonight is uh, CAV 027 of 2019 for 2072 and 2074 Lakeshore Road. Good evening. Good evening, members of the committee. My name is Paul Demchek. Um, I'm the planner on behalf of the applicant, um, and I'm from Vittori Management. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Demchek. Who is here in attendance for CAV 027 of 2019 for 2072 and 2074 Lakeshore Road? Okay. I see none. Um, go ahead, Mr. Demchek. We've received late comments from Halton Conservation. Have yes. you uh, gotten a copy of that and you're aware of them? Yes, I have. Okay. Are there any questions of Mr. Demchek? Would you like to take us through your um, application? This is your time. You may comment as you wish. Um, so just very briefly and, and for the benefit of the committee, um, I have submitted a planning justification report um, in support of the, um, the proposed variances um, and the proposed dwelling. Um, it also outlines the neighborhood context, which is quite unique, obviously, within the, the town of Oakville and this specific neighborhood. Um, with um, large um, estate um, lots, um, as well as um, very um, executive style homes um, that exist along this lakeshore frontage. Um, so essentially the, the application before you is uh, for two large consolidated lots. Um, they are proposed to be demolished with one uh, large detached dwelling uh, proposed. Um, just for the, again, for the benefit of the committee, we have met with planning staff prior to submitting the application. Uh, we have taken into consideration, um, you know, a, a very um, concerted attempt to mitigate impacts on a number of fronts, uh, both as it relates to uh, rear yard impacts, as it relates to the siting of the dwelling, as it relates to a variated roof line um, that lowers towards the uh, side lot lines. Um, there are um, rear side yard setbacks that are greater than what is uh, required in the bylaw. Um, and I will note that obviously um, the application before you today does not seek any variances for um, coverage or floor area ratio. Um, and just one final point being that um, further um, consideration was given to uh, maintaining existing street trees as well as neighboring trees, um, whereby even with um, elements like the uh, driveway design, uh, we have maintained both existing driveway access points um, to, uh, to protect all existing street trees along the lakeshore frontage. 
Well, while I, I, I appreciate the submission, I have a, I'm struggling with the late comments from Halton District. While they're saying that it's okay to proceed, they have no objection to the current list of variances, they're strongly recommending that you defer because a whole slew of other variances might come out of their process. How do you feel about that? So I believe, um, and perhaps I could clarify through Brandon, I believe the original comments uh, from Conservation Holton requested deferral. Um, there were revised comments that have uh, recommended um, approval um, of this subject application. And um, that is noted because um, an error was essentially made in terms of the um, uh, review of the geotechnical report um, that um, uh, we have submitted to Conservation Halt Conservation Halton. We had confirmed with them late last week um, um, that they are now reviewing the correct report and that subsequent letter was submitted to the committee. Oh, okay, I must have missed that because yeah. that was not what the one we read uh, prior to. Okay, are there any other questions of Mr. Jemchak at this time? I see none. Okay, if you're satisfied with the comments from staff and the attached um, conditions, we're ready to take this matter into committee. Very well. Who is ready to move? Yeah, there's no one else here. I, members in the audience who have not raised their hand for any application, I'm assuming you're here for this application. There's a few people who've been here. You're here for this application? Okay. Okay. Who's ready to move a motion? Mr. Hardcastle, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Having undertaken my site visit and reviewed the staff report uh, and written submission uh, materials by the applicant, uh, I am satisfied with the requested variances and I'll put forward a motion of approval. Um, the uh, motion would be subject to uh, the two uh, standard conditions, the first being that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevations dated February 6, 2019, second being that the approval expires uh, two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Uh, I note that the Conservation Halton requirements in terms of the permit will be addressed through the normal course of action prior to uh, the issuance of any building permit as applicable law, so uh, I, I won't, uh, I don't care to include that as a condition. Um, Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Hardcastle. Uh, is there a discussion on this recommendation? Any further comments? I see none. All those in support? Okay, the application has been approved. Thank you. Uh, we have minutes for February 12th to confirm. Um, who would like to move the minutes of February 12th? Mr. Flemington moves the minutes for February 12th. And then motion for adjournment, Mr. Hartcastle. Very well, we are adjourned at 8.43.